This is Katherine Nightingale at Chattanooga State Community College. This video is for section 13.8 of Math 2110, which is Calculus 3. We're going to discuss Lagrange multipliers and optimization. We'll talk about what they are, why they work, and we'll go through one example of Lagrange multipliers. So what are Lagrange multipliers? They are a tool for finding maximums and minimums of a function, f of x, y, or f of x, y, z, subject to some constraint where g of x, y equals c, or g of x, y, z equals c. And c has to be a constant. So we have a function, and we want the maximums and minimums on a certain constraint. Lagrange multipliers can be used to find many things. One is the greatest and smallest values of a function z equals x squared plus 2y squared on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1. So here the circle would be our constraint and we're trying to maximize and minimize the function on that constraint. You can use Lagrange multipliers to find the maximum volume of a box that's made from 12 square meters of cardboard, or as we'll see in class, you can use Lagrange multipliers to find the maximum and minimum distance from a surface to a point. Lagrange multipliers work because at any point where there's a maximum or minimum of f subject to the constraint, the constraint will be tangent to a level curve of f or a level surface of f depending on if you're in the two variable or three vari variable case. Now think back to when we talked about gradients. We know that gradients are always perpendicular to level curves or level surfaces. And what happens is that results in the fact that at any maximum or minimum, because g is tangent to f, we're going to have that the gradients are parallel. So the gradient of f will equal some scalar times the gradient of g. And the scalar, we use a lambda, is called a Lagrange multiplier. So that lambda is what we define to be our Lagrange multiplier. So here were the highlights of this slide. We have the constraint is tangent to the level curve or level surface whenever there's a maximum or minimum. Gradients are always perpendicular to level curves or level surfaces. And so gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. Here is an example showing why we actually get that gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. Okay, on the left here, we have the surface f. It's in blue. And then we have the constraint g equals c in red. So it's that red curved line that we see. Now we can look at this and see that the maximum of f on the constraint g is where we have that green dot. And you can see that g is tangent to the surface f at that point. Now over here on the right, we have the maximum right there in, with the green dot. And we have level curves of f. And so here's the gradient of f. It has to be perpendicular to the level curve. So it's pointing in towards the middle of the circle. And then we have the gradient of g, which we know is perpendicular to the red g constraint. 
and you can see visually that they're parallel to each other. So they're each perpendicular to their respective level curve. And now since gradient of f and gradient of g are parallel, gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. Now in this case, they go in opposite directions. So lambda would be a negative, but it can be positive or negative in order to make the equality true. Let's look at one more example. So we have our function f, which is this rainbow colored surface. We have our constraint g of xy equals c down on the xy plane. And now the black line drawn on the function is the constraint basically superimposed on the function. So that's what it would look like if we drew the circle on our surface. Now you can see where the maximums of f are on that constraint. We have a maximum of f on the constraint at square root of 2, 1, 2. We have a minimum at square root of 2, negative 1, negative 2. And we have these other two maximums and minimums over on the left. Okay, now here are the level curves of f. I drew them in red down on the xy axis. And you can see that at the point where there are maximums or minimums, our level curves are tangent to the constraint g or vice versa. And so we have the gradient of f here perpendicular to the level curve of f. We have the gradient of g perpendicular to the constraint g and because they're parallel we have gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. So no matter whether we're looking at a maximum or minimum that relationship is going to hold true. So hopefully that visual helped solidify why we can use that system of equations gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g. Now in order to apply Lagrange multipliers what we do is we basically set up a system of equations gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g and the constraint g of xy equals c or g of xyz equals c. So we set up, set up this system of equations and we want to solve it. Now the gradient part basically translates to the first partial derivative of f with respect to x equals lambda times the first partial derivative of g with respect to x similarly for the partial derivatives with respect to y and with respect to z. So our system of equations will have each of these partial derivative equalities and the constraint g of xyz equals c or g of xy equals c depending on if we have two or three independent variables. We don't always need to find lambda, but sometimes it can be helpful when we're solving the system of equations. They will not always be a linear system, so you can't necessarily use matrix algebra or anything like that to solve them. You have to get creative in order to solve them sometimes. So to finish this video, I want to do one example and then We'll do more examples in class to kind of solidify the method of Lagrange multipliers. So here's our example for the video. Find the extreme values of the function f of xy equals x squared plus 2y squared on the circle 
x squared plus y squared equals 1. So whatever function equals a constant is your constraint. So x squared plus y squared equals 1 is my constraint. g of x, y equals c. Now my next step is going to be to set up my system of equations. So I want to take partial derivatives. These are going to be my three equations in the system. So derivative of f with respect to x equals lambda times derivative of f with respect to g. So 2x equals lambda times 2x. And then the partial derivatives with respect to y gives me 4y equals lambda times 2y. So I'm taking these derivatives of f and of g. And then the constraint was the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, in this case, the very first equation gives us a really easy relationship between um, the x's and the lambdas. So from this equation, either x has to be 0 in order for it to be true, or lambda has to be 1 if x is not 0 in order for that equation to be true. Now, when you have more than one case like this, it helps to actually break down your calculation into cases to make sure you get all possible points where there's a maximum or minimum. So we're going to test each case. And in case 1, we'll let that be if x equals 0, then the third equation, the constraint, becomes 0 squared plus y squared equals 1. And so we get y equals plus or minus 1. So we have the point 0, 1, and 0, negative 1, because x was 0, and we got y equals 1 or negative 1. So that's if x equals 0. Now the second case was if lambda equals 1. Then the second equation becomes 4y equals 2y. And the only way that could be true is if y is 0. So we have y must be 0. And when y is 0, the third equation is x squared plus 0 squared equals 1. So x is plus or minus 1. y is 0. So we have the points 1, 0 and negative 1, 0. So we have four points at which our function reaches either a maximum or a minimum on this constraint. OK, so we know that maximums or minimums occur at 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. So Basically, we just have to plug these into our original equation to figure out which ones give maximum values and which one gives minimum values. So we have f of 0, negative 1. Plug that into your f function. You get a 2. f of 0, 1 equals 2. f of 1, 0 equals 1 and f of negative 1, 0 equals 1. So we have the maximum value of f on the circle is 2. And the minimum value of f on the circle is 1. So we've solved the, the problem. I just want to give a, a brief visual of what this looks like. So we have an elliptical paraboloid for our function. Our function was z equals x squared plus 2y squared. Down here on the xy plane we have x squared plus y squared equals 1, the circle or constraint. And now I'm going to basically lift up that circle. Think about it being a string and I lift it up and put it on 
the paraboloid above. So I get my constraint drawn on the function looks like this and I have a maximum of the function on that constraint here at 0, 1, 2 and at 0, negative 1, 2 which we can't see because it's behind and a minimum at 1, 0, 1 and we found there's another minimum at negative 1, 0, 1 We'll do more examples in class, but hopefully this gives you a brief understanding of Lagrange multipliers.